We're back with the coverage of the best games of week 1 of the Smogon Champions League, which is a tournament with games from all tiers from Ubers to PU and Little Cup and Smogon doubles. For more details, check out the description, but let's start right off with one of the top OU games of the week. First up is Tace vs TPP, and Tace is using a more balanced team, while TPP is using an offensive team with Halucha, who you don't really see very often anymore. The idea is to use Grassy Seed on Bird and Halucha, along with Rillaboom and go for a Swords Dance win. It can be particularly threatening because it can use Taunt to protect against status moves. We see Lead Mew and it immediately goes for Nasty Plot. Nasty Plot Mew often uses Vacuum Wave so that Weavile, one of the best Pokemon in the tier, can't beat it. This Mew is very threatening. It boosts for a Nasty Plot one more time as Toxapex uses Toxic, and Mew is looking very deadly because it can pick up a kill or two before fainting even with the poison. But then, as Mew finally goes for a Psychic, Taste reveals Pyapa Berry on Toxapex and hazes to remove its boost. Assault Fest Loking Galar handles Mew now that it's poisoned, and one big threat is neutralized. However, TPP's entire team is full of big threats and a few turns later they both exchange Stealth Rock and TPP brings in Rillaboom. Rillaboom uses Sword Dance as Taste goes to Tornado's T. Tornado's T goes for a Hurricane, but the Rillaboom is EV'd to live the hit and throws off a powerful knockoff to put Tornado's in range of Grassy Glide. Taste is now forced to sacrifice Magnezone to waste enough time to stall out Grassy Terrain turns, but all Rillaboom does is switch out, ready to come back later but this time in more of a support role. Now, Rillaboom's job is to use Grassy Terrain to help out Halucha and it sets up a very interesting dynamic. The Garchomp actually never wants to KO something while Grassy Terrain is active, because if it does, then Halucha can come in and use Garchomp as fodder to Swords Dance because of its defense boost. He has to find a way to get around the Halucha problem. He does this by sacrificing Toxapex to the Heatran to stall out Grassy Terrain turns, and then switches in Sloking Galar predicting Rillaboom. As Rillaboom feigns, he uses Future Sight Sloking. That gives Garchomp the protection to come back in and deal with Halucha. It becomes a 3 on 3 and sets up a final showdown. Weavile vs Weavile. Both Weaviles have the same speed and power and it becomes a true coin flip to see which Weavile comes out on top. Tace's Weavile barely hangs on and wins the 1v1 and it's all over. Heatran dies in one hit, and TPP has one last cool Pokemon with Endure, Weakness Policy, Garchomp, but that's just for show and Weavile outspeeds for the win. Unfortunately for the Mount Silver Foxes, Taste was one of the few wins that week, and they lose 2-8 to the Islanders. And up next we have a UU game between Kumiko and Steve, where both teams are using balanced teams with Chansey as a special wall. Kumiko's main wall breaker looks to be Choice Bandit Golur, and Steve's main wall breaker is Mamoswine. Interestingly, in the UU tier, Salamence doesn't often run a Dragon Dance moveset. Fairies make it very difficult to win with Salamence because its best physical flying type move is Dual Wing Beat. Even if you wanted to use a move like Iron Tail, stuff like Primarina could stop it. Instead, Salamence often uses a special attacker moveset with Defog and Ruth. With Heavy Duty Boots and Intimidate, Salamence becomes an effective wall Pokemon with Defog who still hits decently hard because of its base 110 special attack. Early on, it looks like Cobalion isn't going to make too much progress versus Pokemon like Starmie and Skarmory, but then Kumiko reveals a never-before-seen move, Megahorn, and lures the Starmie to its death. It's not immediately winning, but Cobalion does have a good matchup versus Chansey, Zerud, and Mamoswine. But later in the game, Cobalion takes a little bit too much damage from switching into a Zerud Power Whip, and then starts taking Rocky Helmet damage while trying to take on Skarmory. Skarmory barely survives the Cobalion Onslaught and leaves Cobalion at very low health and effectively shuts it down. This is a big limiter on the progress it could have made. There's some maneuvering going on and Golurk and Mamoswine trade kills and Cobalion gets hit while trying to switch in, effectively leading to a 4v4. Mamoswine is basically walled by Pain Split Rotom Wash, and it becomes a bit of a long game trying to outposition each other for the win. On turn 94, there's finally a breakthrough. Mamoswine goes for Ice Shard trying to knock out Salamence, but Salamence surprisingly lives the hit and KOs a Mamoswine instead. It takes a little bit longer, but they convert the advantage into a win, winning the game on turn 117. 
Kumiko's team would go on to win the week 7-3. In PU, a lot of Pokemon are using Sand teams with Gigalith plus Sand Slash forming a powerful core. PU is right at the intersection where the Eviolite form of top Pokemon are just as good as some of the fully evolved weaker Pokemon. In Scotty vs. Termi, we see Infestation Tangela being used to trap Eldegoss, leading to an easy Sand Slash Sword Dance win. However, in John Filt vs. Snaga, we see something very different. Snaga brings a sand core of Gigalith plus Sand Slash, but John Filch brings a hyper offensive team with Suicide Lead Frostlass and Sand Rush Lycanroc. Frostlass sacrifices itself for some spikes, and Lycanroc comes in for a Swords Dance. The problem is that Lycanroc is very strong by PU standards and decently fast. Sand teams use Sand Slash for speed control and the ability to beat faster Pokemon, but Sand Rush Lycanroc uses Gigalith's own sand against it. Lycanroc with a Swords Dance outspeeds the entire team because of the opponent's Gigalith and has enough power to one-hit KO everything, leading to a very quick 7-turn win, a big contrast from the UU game we saw earlier. Finally, in Little Cup, we had a very special game between Ninja Dog, the 2021 Little Cup Open winner, and Tsunami aka Maya, who is fourth on the all-time Hall of Fame but has never played Little Cup seriously before. Tsunami also hasn't played a tournament recently, with most of his accomplishments coming from years ago. Can he get the job done in a tier he's never played before? He leads Mianfu, but he gets fooled. He uses Fake Out versus Ninja Dog's Mianfu, but Ninja Dog's Mianfu isn't Regenerator, like most Mianfus. Instead, it's Inner Focus, specifically for the Mianfu lead. He uses the Inner Focus's protection to get up a Swords Dance and literally goes for the win. He knocks out Coughing trying to switch in and then wins a Speed Tie versus Natu. Tsunami's Mianfu faints too and the game's effectively over. Ninja Dog knocks off Staryu because he doesn't want to risk a high jump kick miss and then Diglett revenge kills. After that, Diglett and Magby wrap up and Tsunami's Little Cup debut did not go as planned and his team loses 2-8 in the week. As for the celebrities you might be interested in, Pokeam had a pretty clean win in Ennu where he used a balanced team with Pokemon like Choice Scarf in Didi and Wish Protect Sylveon. And Blunder brought an interesting hail team, but got too unlucky before he could make a game out of it and end up losing. VGC star Joe UX9 had a rough, slightly unlucky debut in Smogon Doubles, losing with a team built around Torkoal and Venusaur. There were a lot of good games this week, so let me know what you want to see more out of this type of content. Maybe one game per tier? Let me know what you think of the video format down in the comments below, and should it be longer or shorter? Also, if you want to see these games live, check me out on Twitch, I stream Smogon's Champions League Sunday, and also check out my second YouTube channel where I upload the commentary.